Hey everyone, NFI Hammer here for another video. In this video, I will be recapping my first year in the miniature painting hobby. I'll be going over everything that I've bought, how much it cost, what big mistakes I made, what wins I found, how much do you reckon I've spent? Did I do a good job? What could I have done better? Let's find out in this video. <laughs> If you're new to the channel, welcome. This channel is about me documenting my experience in the miniature painting hobby as a beginner. When I started, I looked at all these amazing and awesome videos on YouTube by professionals or people that had been in the hobby for ages, and I knew there was no way that my models could look anything like them. So to make other people feel welcome, I thought I would document my experience, including all the big stuff ups and messes I make so that other people can feel more approachable and that they can join into the hobby as well. For experts or people that have been in the hobby for a long time, this channel is also a great opportunity for you to share your knowledge to other beginners and so that we can all learn and improve together. If this sounds like something that interests you, please remember to like and subscribe the video. It really helps me out. Enough talking, let's get into my one year in the hobby. My wife knew that I was really interested in Warhammer. I'd been playing a lot of video games and reading about the lore, but I was too nervous to get started. So for Christmas last year, she bought me a paint and tool set, as well as some blue and the getting started with Warhammer comes with one Necron Warrior and one uh, Assault Intercessor from the Ultramarines. So this was a really good way of getting started for me because I wasn't sure if I'd like it or not. But if you do know that you're interested in the hobby, I'd recommend just skipping over this step and just buying your first models. Or I can show you later in this video how you can actually get some models absolutely free without paying a cent. So getting into the Necrons, which is the main army that I've been collecting, is these Necron Immortals. So after I did the first two models, I really wanted to keep painting, so I went down to my local news agents and I got these for $13.99 from the Imperium magazine. Next up was this Necron Overlord that I bought off eBay, and I think it was $20. And I really enjoyed this model. I thought there was heaps of detail. On the same eBay order, I also got 10 Necron Warriors for $20. And then the second 10 I got from the Recruit Edition, from 9th Edition. And they were really cheap because I actually managed to sell off the Ultramarines that came in that box. So it really reduced the price overall. For every 10 Necron Warriors, you get three Scarab Swarms as well, so they're kind of free with the Warriors. And you can see here that the older models I haven't based yet, so I need to go back and do all those. The Royal Warden was also part of the Recruit Edition, and I think it's a really slept on model. I think that it kind of blends the Cryptek kind of look with the Warrior look, and it's pretty cool, um, but I don't really hear many people talk about it. So moving on to my flyers, these are all from the Imperium magazine for $20 each. This is one of my favorite models. I really like the posing of it. It looks very dynamic flying through the air like that. I think there's a lot of different interest. Uh, so it's probably my favorite Necron model, or at least my favorite infantry one. And then the Necron spider here. This was the first vehicle I painted and it has so much detail on the top, but underneath as well, there's hidden away all these little um, things, which is super awesome. I really wish I'd actually gotten the second one of these when they came out, because you can use two at a time. And talking about numbers, so these is a Necron Tomb Blade, and you need three of them to form a unit, but you only get one per magazine, so it costs $60 to get three, so it's not a huge amount of saving. Uh, as you can see here, I've painted one, I've built one, but I'm still waiting on the third. And then this is my first and only model that I've bought full price from Games Workshop. So this was a Necron Doomstalker and it's so big it doesn't really even fit in camera here. But it was to celebrate getting 300 subscribers, so I wanted to get something big and something special. 
I'm wanting to do the same for 500 subscribers, so if you want to help me out hit that target, please consider leaving a subscribe down below. Now we've got the Chronomancer. This guy is actually pretty cool as well. I really like his mantle and his stuff. For $20, it was an absolute steal. Um, I really liked the base. He kind of doesn't have any legs. He kind of fits like a squid thing. And then Scorpec Destroyers. You get three of these plus a plasma site for $20, which again is insane. The blade was really challenging to try and get the different um, shading techniques. I've covered it with a odd coat varnish to give it that shiny reflective effect, which looks kind of cool on camera here. And then on Imperium Magazine 50, specific issue I talk about, you get actually an entire Royal Court for $20, which is absolutely insane. And this is one of the f models that you get, and he's an absolute tank. He's the Scorpec Lord, so he joins the Scorpec Destroyers. He's got like a cannon for an arm, claws for an arm, a blade for an arm. He's just a total unit. And then you also get one of these reanimators, uh, which is basically a baby Doomstalker that does like a healing aura. And he was really good at the beginning of 10th edition, but with the codex, they kind of nerfed it to oblivion. And you can see I've got a second one in the background there that I have built, but I haven't yet painted. So it's not really any urgency on that. Then you've got the um, Canoptic um, Crypto Thralls here. So these again were really good with the early 10th edition, but they kind of weaken them a lot. I call them bin chickens because they look like ibises. And then finally in the Canoptic Court you get this Plasmancer, which I kind of poo pooed this guy a lot because he kind of looks like a grumpy old man that yells at clouds. Uh, but he's kind of warmed up to me, both the model isn't actually as bad as I thought. And then we've got this Canoptic Wraith, which again you need three for a unit, so it's $60. Which isn't a huge saving, but it's, it's nice. I'm really looking forward to completing that set and being able to try it out on the tabletop. And then finally the Triac Stalker, so super excited about this one. Um, it's my newest model. You can see I haven't attached the cannon yet to the base because it kind of looks like a hot dog tomato sauce mustard bottle, um, but it's a pretty huge unit. And for $40, it's a pretty good bargain. So they're all my models. Everything you've seen here, you can watch a full video of me paint if you're interested in following along in my journey. If you're a bit of a data nerd like me, you might be interested in seeing the raw numbers. So here's the 53 models, or 52 if you ignore the Assault Intercessor, and that cost me $427.99 in dollary dues. Games Workshop, if you bought it full price, that would be $1,059. You know, most people don't buy directly from Games Workshop and get it through a reseller for a little bit of a discount, but that's more than half price off, which is a phenomenal deal. So it just shows how buying the Imperium magazines and cherry picking the issues that you want, as well as buying box sets and then selling the half that you're not collecting is a really good way of getting models for cheap. My pile of shame consists exclusively of this Leviathan box. So I thought, what happens if I run out of Necrons to paint? I need something else to paint. So I bought the Leviathan pre-order for $336 dues. I managed to sell the Space Marine half for $236 dues on eBay. So that actually only left me with $99.50. So although I've only painted these 20 Termagants here, as well as the Ripper Swarm 2 that come with it, I've also got things like the Core Rules book and the Mission Deck, which I'll show you in a sec, you know, and that's worth like $162. So overall, I don't really regret it and I will definitely get around to it at some point, but this is all I've painted so far. And for the data nerds like me, you can see here that Games Workshop really does a really good value on their box sets, especially when they come with two factions. And if you can offload the faction to a collector that's interested in it, 
Um, it's a real win-win situation because you can get stuff for amazing value, you know, and in here, the units alone, definitely worth the $99.50 price tag. And you're essentially getting the rules and the mission deck, plus like the dice and whatnot that comes with like absolutely free. I've also collected a little bit of books over the year. So the first book was the Getting Started with Warhammer, which again, probably recommend just skipping and going for a box set. Ironically, the recruit manual is actually smaller. That came in the ninth edition recruit set. Um, so that's a bit weird, but yeah, I'd recommend just getting one of those. Definitely don't get both. And then this is the cause rule book from Leviathan set. So this was amazing value. Definitely recommend getting this. And the rule book also comes with the mission rules as well, which is really helpful for playing the game. And then I also, for Christmas this year, my wife got me the newly released Necron Codex. So that was really exciting to get that. I think terrain is one of the things that as a beginner, I had no idea how expensive and how much you needed. So these little pipe things I got from the Imperium magazine, you get about four or five pipes for the $20. This was my attempt at a purple plasma, which was a bit of a fail. Uh, you could also get these hematotrope reactors, I always mispronounce it, which is pretty awesome. Like the detail in these terrain is absolutely phenomenal, but this costs $20. And for a 44 by 60 inch battlefield, you just need so much terrain, like an insane amount. And this is the ruins, which is quite important for infantry that can move through it. And on top of it, and again, like the detail on these is really good. And I've got three of these. So that cost me $60 from the magazine, but it's just crazy how quickly it adds up. And then when you put all the terrain out on the battlefield, it still doesn't really add up to what you need. And this is the most recent Christmas themed terrain crate container that I did a video of. Uh, which was kind of just like a fun Christmas thing. But again, this is $20, so adds up really quickly. So those scary numbers I was talking about before, uh, I've bought eight magazines from the Imperium run, and each one of those is $20. So I've spent $160 on terrain, which is kind of crazy because it's almost like, you know, two-fifths of what I've spent on Necron models, but I've really got a lot less to show for it. I think buying probably non-Games Workshop terrain, a big pack like you saw in that video before, is probably a much better way of buying terrain that you need to play the game. However, the Games Workshop terrain is a lot of fun to paint and is very detailed, so if you're not really interested in fielding a whole battlefield full of it, uh, it's certainly an okay way to go. I have a lot to say about paints. As you can see, I'm a sucker for the Games Workshop Citadel color range. However, you can also see that I've kind of gone absolutely overboard and insane with the paints that I have. I have so much paints, I actually have a paint pile of shame, which I don't know is a very common experience. I talk about this a lot in my top three, bottom three things that I wish I had learnt. As a beginner, um, feel free to check that video out if that seems something that you'd be interested in. But yeah, it's sort of maybe my biggest uh, regret in my first year of the hobby is all of these paints. I think because of my shame, I don't actually keep track of my paint buying behavior as much as I probably should. As well as with the Imperium magazine, they sometimes have these filler issues where you get two paints for $20, which is kind of not a very good deal especially because half the time the paints aren't what you want. So yeah, almost $300 in paints. So that's something to consider. <laughs> Definitely um, a lot more than I expected for 12 months into the hobby. If you've made it this far into the video, first I'd like to say thank you. And secondly, please consider leaving a like and subscribe. It really helps the algorithm of YouTube, you know, recommend these videos and it's really appreciated by me. 
So in terms of actual like tools and equipment and basing supplies, not much has really changed since, you know, maybe five months into the hobby. I did another video, recommend you go check that out if you really want to see what sort of tools and things that I've bought. The only major change is that I've bought a new airbrush, or I should say it was given to me as a birthday present in September. So that was been really cool. I've tried it out on a couple of models and it definitely seems interesting, but it may be a little bit still beyond my skill level. There's a separate airbrushing video if you want to check that out as well. So besides refilling some old paint cans when they ran out, as well as trying the Citadel Wraithbone spray and a couple of paintbrushes, really nothing has changed. Likewise for the basing supply, I'm still using the same basing stuff I bought originally, as well as I've started mixing in some Martian Iron Crust and Astro Granite, which are Citadel technical paints, into my bases just to make it a little bit easier for myself. The total cost here you can see is mainly just the spray paints and paint brushes, which is to be expected and I have a lot of spray paint still to go. In the basing supplies, it's just little bits and pieces, just experimenting with different stuff. You could probably buy half the items on this list and still have plenty of basing supplies. Now for the people that are interested in the dollary do values of what I've spent. I've spent $427 on the Necrons, $99.50 on the Tyranids, $160 on Terrain, and that totals $687.49 for the models in total. Moving on to the rest of my equipment, I've got paints at $298, tools at $141, basing at 63 and that's a total of $526. So that's quite a lot more than I expected. So the moment of truth adding it all together as a total cost for the first year in the hobby was $687 for models and $526 for paints and tools. So that's a total of $1,114 total. So that is considerably a large amount of money and I'm very privileged to be in this part of my life that I can afford this hobby. Doing a rough gut check, I've been doing one video a week documenting my beginner's experience and so that's four videos a month, you know, for 12 months of a year, $100 a month. It sort of checks out, right? And if you look at the savings, that's $1,248. So I've been doing a quite a good job looking for those cheap Imperium magazines, as well as buying those bundle box sets and offloading half of them. I'm really excited about year two in the hobby. I can't wait to see what exciting miniatures and techniques and stuff I will learn. Thank you so much to everyone who's been on the journey with me up until this point. And to anyone new, thanks for joining me. Please feel free to share your tips and comments down below. I respond to every single one of them. And until next time, see you then. Bye.